All right, so we're just going to do the first one, which is what we covered yesterday from 4-2, finding the inverse based on the points, and then finding the domain and range. So the relation consists of the following points in the segments drawn between them, find the coordinates, domain, and range of the inverse. So I'm actually going to graph it down there on the bottom. Um, so the original points would have been 0, 1. Three, two, oops, four, five, six, seven, and nine, eight. So seven, eight, nine, eight. So original function should have looked like that. And then how do I find the inverse points? Just switch the x and the y is good. So the x's of the inverse would now be 1, 2, 5, 7, and 8. And the y's would be 0, 3, 4, 6, 9. So now if I graph that, 1, 0, 2, 3, 5, 4, 7, 6. And eight, seven, eight, nine. And my and my graph looks something like that. So again, if I had drawn the line through that y equals x, it should fold over it and overlap. Okay, but sometimes, most of the time, it's easier just to switch them. Who's right so far on their graphs and stuff? Okay, good. All right, so now you got to do domain and range. So domain of my <coughs> initial function is what? Yep, zero, good, zero to nine. So the x values go zero to nine, and then the range, good, one to eight. And then we just switch it for my inverse, right? So the range becomes the domain, the domain becomes the range. The domain is one less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to eight, and the range zero less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to nine. Easy stuff, right? Any questions on what we learned yesterday? Okay, so we're going to do the notes for four to <coughs> here, okay? So this is how you find the inverse of a relation and a function if you're given the equation. So one thing is you want to note the notation changes. So if I'm calling the initial function f of x, then the, uh, the inverse is labeled as f negative 1 of x. So that's how you distinguish the difference between the original and the inverse. And then it's just step-by-step -step process. The first thing you're going to do is plug in y for f of x. So you're simply just replacing f of x with y. And then you are going to switch the x and the y, just like we just did with the points we're going to do with the variables. So the y becomes the x, the x becomes the y. And then you want to solve for the new y, so you want that new y to be isolated. And then the last step is to take the y and replace it with what we, how we show notation for the inverse function, which is f negative 1 of x. So let's work through the first one. So find the inverse of the function. Step 1, replace f of x with y. So this is y equals x over 3. Step two, switch the x and the y's. So this becomes x equals y over 3. Step three, solve for the new y. So this is where it can look differently depending on what you've got. In this case, if I want to get that y on the side by itself, I have to get rid of the divided by 3, which means I would do what? Good. So I'm going to multiply by 3 here and here. So these cancel. 3x equals y. And then I just want to switch it so that you're like used to seeing that y on the left hand side, y equals 3x. And the last thing you want to do is put the f negative 1 of x back in place of the y. And that's your inverse. Yep. The Correct. So if I leave it as f of x, I'm saying that f of x is 3x, but really f of x is x over 3. 
So you want to make sure that you're noting that this is not the original, this is my inverse, and that's how you do it. You do f negative 1 of x. So step 1, replace the, the f of x with y. Step 2, switch the x and the y. Step 3, solve for the new y. Step 4, plug the f negative 1 back into the y. Okay, you try it. All right, so if f of x becomes y, then I switch the x and the y, and then I want to get y by itself. How do I do that? Subtract that 2 thirds from both sides. So x minus 2 thirds equals y. Just going to switch it so the y is on the left. And then f negative 1 of x equals x minus 2 thirds. Raise your hand if you got it right. Good. Questions if you didn't? Yep. Nope. Some, so it depends on what it looks like. If that, like, 2 was attached to the x, then I'm going to have to, like, subtract the 3 and then divide by 2. But if it's something that's totally separate from it, you just want to get it. The whole goal is to get that the new y by itself, and then once it's by itself, you're good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I'll tell you, there's actually more than one way to do this, like the actual process, but your answer should be the same. Mm -hmm. So first step is the same for everybody, right? Y equals 3x minus 7. Second step's the same. Switch them. Um, and then how you approach this next... Step could be two different ways. What's one way to do it? Okay, so you both you said both of them at the same time, right? So one option is divide by three, and one is to distribute. Okay, both are correct. So if I wanted to divide by three and get rid of it right, right away, I could, and I end up with x over three equals y minus seven because these would cancel, and then I just add the seven to both sides. Y equals x over three plus seven, and then f negative 1 of x equals x over 3 plus 7. So that's the first way. Um, I distributed the 3. That's the second way. Yeah. yeah, so it works. So if I did x equals, distribute the 3 in here, 3y minus 7, and then I would add 7 to both sides. x plus 7 equals 3y. And then divide by 3. And I get y equals x over 3. Oh, I didn't distribute this. Yeah, this should be 21. 21, 21, 21. Everybody understand that? Like what I did wrong there? Yeah, okay. 21. So this should be x plus 21 over 3. So f negative 1 of x equals x plus 21 over 3. So I will actually take either answer on this. If this was a standardized test or if it's multiple choice, then this has to get split, which would then result in that x over 3 plus 7. So they are the same, okay? And on open-ended, you're fine with either one. If it's multiple choice, standardized test, anything like that, make sure you realize that that x plus 21 over 3 would then need to get split and simplified. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Last one. So first thing we have to do is actually set up the equation. This says, to make tea, use one sixth teaspoon of tea per ounce of water plus a teaspoon for the pot. Use the inverse to find the number of ounces of water needed if seven teaspoons of tea are used. So we have to use the first pieces of information to actually set up an equation. So if we're doing one sixth teaspoon per, God bless you, per ounce of water plus one teaspoon of water for the pot, okay, then I would have to do one sixth per ounce of water. So we could say it's W, you could use whatever variable you want there. Plus one teaspoon that you would add into the pot. So this is gonna equal my T, okay? Now if I'm finding the inverse of that, I do the same thing we did before. I switch the variables. So this is W equals 1 sixth T plus 1. And then subtract the 1.
And how do I get 1 6 t to be just t? Good. Multiply by 6 on both sides. So this is the inverse of that function. So that if this was an t of x, this would be t negative 1 of x. And it says, use the inverse to find the number of ounces of water needed if 7 teaspoons of tea are used. So how much water do I need if 7 ounces of tea? Okay, so once we find the inverse, right? So we're saying that this is not here. We're saying this is the inverse, which could have been 6w minus 6 equals t as well. Like we could have distributed that. But when it wants you to plug back in, we have literally swapped these variables. We have said the t is now the water and the water is now the t. So if it says to find the number of ounces of water needed if 7 teaspoons of tea are used, we actually have to plug that 7 in the place of the water. So I would do 6 times 7 minus 1 equals t. And then 6 times 6 equals t. And t equals 36. That makes sense, more sense. Okay, so, so typically... When you're solving, you're fine. When We haven't switched the variables, but this time we actually said that the W became the T and the T became the W, which is why we'd need to switch it. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay.